Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoven's Nest. Today I have a true trash to treasure. I am going to take these three tin cans and their lids and create something super cute for the bathroom. The first thing I'm going to do is take some 100% acetone and a cotton round and just work on getting the rest of that glue off because I'm going to be painting these and I don't want all of that texture to show. I'm going to be doing something with the lids to make them a little bit thicker. I'm tracing out two circles of cardboard. Now this is fairly thin cardboard. It's just from the bottom of a box. If you had corrugated cardboard, one piece would probably be enough. Then I'm going to cut them out and glue two of the pieces right on top of the lids. I'm going to want to build up the lids and make them look like wood. So I'm using some of this crack shot spackle and I'm going to take a craft stick and just put a generous layer on top. You're going to want to pretend that you're icing a cake and if you've never done that before well then I sorry I can't help you but anyhow I'm just going to spread it around give it a nice even layer on the top and then I'm also going to go around the edges and fill in those gaps from the cardboard. I am so excited to share with you that I am co-hosting with Mom Does Life Handmade for her monthly useful DIY challenge. Mom is an amazing creator. She makes so many beautiful and high-end looking crafts from things that you would use around the house. Fabric, paper, cardboard, tin, you name it, she has done it. So if you are interested in seeing all the wonderful things that she can show you to create with regular everyday household items, please go check out her channel. I will have it linked down in my description box and there will also be a playlist link. You're not going to want to miss out on that. For the cans, I'm going to be using Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Parisian Gray. It's a really pretty light gray. I'm going to do the inside of the cans as well, so when you open up the lid, it looks a little bit more complete and doesn't look exactly like a tin can. I'll do one coat on the inside and one coat on the outside. This chalk paint is super thick. I find it even thicker than some other brands of chalk paint. And I really love that for it because you can use one coat and it will cover beautifully. Once the cans were dry, I used some masking tape just to mark off a section at the bottom that I'm going to use the Maui Sand chalk paint and just do one coat all the way around. In hindsight, I should have just painted the top part gray and then done the bottom part in the dark gray right on the tin can. It probably would have saved me a little bit of paint, a little bit of drying time, but that's okay. It worked out in the end. So this is the next day and these are nice and dry. I'm taking some fine grit sandpaper and I'm just going over the spackle to get off any of the main ridges. I'm not going to be sanding it down 100% smooth because I want these to look like round pieces of wood. I'm also going to make sure that I sand the edges and get a nice smooth finish on that. I don't want any of the spackling to stick out farther than the lid of the can itself. Some of the spackling got underneath the lid of the can, so I'm just taking an older craft knife and just pulling that off just to make sure that the lid will sit properly on top of each can. I learned this lid technique by watching another YouTuber and I will have her link down in my description box too. I'm just taking some DIY chalk paint in white and I'm giving all of the lids, including the sides, one coat. While I wait for the paint to dry, I took three beads that I have and you can see that there's something in the middle of each of them. So I was able to use a piece of a dowel and just push it into the hole of the bead and then cut it off where it needed to be. This last little tiny one, I didn't have a dowel small enough, so I ended up using two bamboo skewers and I just pushed them in as best I could. And now I'm going to paint them with the dark Maui sand chalk paint from Folk Art. Because these beads are shiny, they're gonna need a couple of coats. 
Now I'm going to be using a gel stain in the color Walnut and this is a water-based stain and I picked it up at a dollar store somewhere but I'm pretty sure it's available at different hardware stores as well. I'm using a pretty rough brush because I don't want this to be a solid brown color and you can see that I'm getting some streaking which is really neat because it starts to look like wood. I found that if I hot glued the beads right on top of the lids, it was so much easier to paint them. So I did that for the second coat. I didn't film myself hot gluing them on because I think that's pretty self-explanatory. At least I hope it is. Now that the gel stain is dry, I'm taking the same rough brush. It has been washed and dried. And I'm going to just dry brush some of the dark gray that I used on the cans across the lids in the same direction as the wood grain. I wanted them to look a little bit more deeper and distressed and blend in with the cans a little bit more. I wanted to have some labels on the cans and I wanted their labels to be the same. So I created this on my computer. I will have the free printable available on my website, which is also linked down in my description box. I'm going to cut these out, leaving a little bit of a white line on the outside of the black line, the box. And then I'm going to use some Mod Podge to glue them on. So I'm going to tell you to do as I say and not as I do. For this first can, I didn't put any moisture on the paper and that was my mistake. I thought I would be able to get all of the bubbles out with just putting the Mod Podge on the can, but I have found that if you put a layer of Mod Podge on the back of your label or your paper or whatever you're using, it will join together with the Mod Podge that's on the can much better and you'll get less bubbles. So do that instead of what I'm doing here. Now that I've got all the labels on, I'm going to give the whole can one coat of Mod Podge. Number one, it's going to make the label and uh, the glue that I got on the outside of the label blend in, but it's also going to protect the paint from coming off. Since I'm going to be storing these in the bathroom, sometimes there's a little extra moisture in bathrooms and I don't want this paint to peel off. I'm going to do the same for the lids. The last thing I'm going to do is add some details with this white butcher's twine. I'm using hot glue to start it and then I'm just going to put it all the way around underneath the label and then I'm also going to add one on top of the label and I'll add a little bit to the lid as well. I also added some to the bottom of the bead just to hide where the hot glue is. I think these turned out super cute. What do you think? The second project I have for you is repurposing this Christmas sign that I made before the holidays. I didn't really like how it turned out, so I'm going to take some sandpaper and go over the ink and the paint just to smooth it out. I'm going to give it two coats of white Adirondack Folk Art Home Decor chalk paint. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to do brush strokes up and down for the first coat and the second coat I'm going to do the brush strokes across and that's going to help really camouflage any of the lettering that might show through or any of the black paint. Now for this one, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm using my Cricut Joy and I created this decal of the little tub and hot bath 25 cents soap and towel extra. I will have this as a free printable available on my website. So if you're interested, go click on the link down in my description box and you'll be able to download it for free. As you just saw the layout, I'm going to put the tub in the center. So I'll start with that to make sure that it is centered.
the scent sign didn't come off with the transfer tape so I'm just going to use a pair of tweezers to peel it off and then place it where I want it to be. If I was going to reuse this frame and peel this decal off in the future, I wouldn't do this step. But I really love how this sign turned out, so I'm going to give it a coat of Mod Podge to make sure that none of the letters on the decal peel up. I'd like to thank mom for allowing me to be her co-host this month. I really had a lot of fun with these projects. If you like this type of content, I'd love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. Those two black arrows will show you exactly where to click. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.